train is running through the northern countryside of Belgium. Houses are starting to appear among the trees. We'll soon reach the city. The conductor looks pretty sharp, doesn't she? I've taken a 40-minute ride north from Belgium's capital city of Brussels. We've now entered Antwerp. Good morning. This is Antwerp's central station. The station's covered by a large glass ceiling. The front wall there is so beautifully decorated. It's totally captivating. Those people on the benches are holding something on their laps. What are they all looking at? They're facing the platform. Good morning. May I ask you something? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm taking a perspective on the station on the uh, For a uh, talk for a uh, school. Are you an art student? Uh, Sint Maria Institute, so yeah, classical kunsten. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Goodbye. What a fancy station. No wonder they want to sketch it. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. These pillars look so old and sturdy. Wow! Look how big it is inside. It feels so spacious. A nice high ceiling with a dome. Those women are looking up too. Good morning. It's a beautiful station building, isn't it? Yes, it is. Thank you. Goodbye. According to my guidebook, construction on Antwerp Central Station began in 1895 and took 10 years. Belgium now considers it a national treasure. It's certainly chic in that uniquely European way. All right, it's time to take a look around. Where's my map? I'm heading west from the station toward the Scheld River. Antwerp's old town lies ahead. People are taking it easy in this cafe. They look so comfortable in this nice weather. Buildings on this street are all so ornate. 
You can tell that Antwerp's been a major trade center since the Middle Ages. Hey, here comes a car. I thought this street was just for pedestrians. The shop on the corner is called Panos. Is it a bakery? There's a family doing some shopping. Good morning. Is that waffle good? Do you often have waffles? Waffles. <laughs> Is it good? <laughs> bye bye. Well, there you have it real Belgian waffles. There's a young musician putting his heart into his music. That little guy is taking it easy on the bench. I hear some other kind of music now. It's that man on the bench. Is it a trumpet? But he's not blowing it. I think I'll ask. Hello. What's that instrument? Violin trumpet. Violin trumpet? How unusual. De la Romani. I've never seen one before. Is it popular in Romania? That's a memorable melody. What is it? De la Romani. Yeah, it's de la Romani. How does it work? Viol trumpet. Yes. How does it make the sound? Yeah, this membrane. Ah, and it reverberates through the tube, huh? Well, thanks for your time. There seem to be a lot of street musicians around, considering it's the middle of the morning. What's that on the left? Someone's taking a picture. Is it a big sculpture? It's a hand, a very large one. Excuse me. Ah. Hello. I was wondering if you could tell me anything about that hand there. The hand. Ja, dat is het symbool van Antwerpen eigenlijk. Hè? Het symbool van Antwerpen is het eigenlijk. Hè? Antwerpen. Dus ja, dat staat hier al heel veel jaren eigenlijk. Hè? De hand. <laughs> I'm not sure I understand. Ja, dus dat is een legende van veel jaren geleden. Was er een uh, schipper op de Schelde en die betaalde geen tol. En dan was er dus een reus en dan heeft die reus van die schipper zijn hand afgehakt en in de Schelde geworpen. En dan moest er een, een tijd nadien wilden ze die reus vangen. Dan kwam eigenlijk Antigoon en heeft Antigoon op zijn beurt die reus gevangen. En dan van die reus zijn hand afgehakt 
en in de Schelbegoor. Want er staat een beeld op de grote markt daar aan het stadhuis van Antwerpen. Dat is eigenlijk het beeld met de hand van de reus dat afgehakt is. Dat zou zo'n schijnte geschiedenis in de legende moeten zijn. What a great story! Ja. Thank you! Alsjeblieft, dank je. So this was the giant's hand. Hey, little girl! Do you like that hand? Oops, she ran away. Too bad. I just wanted to tell her about the giant and his hand. There's a group of people in the middle of the street. And there are more people here in front of this shop. It looks like a bakery. It's very popular, isn't it? What are you buying today? For a lekker roche for domake. En twee sandwiches, dat is een gekend uh, bakkertje. Ja, en je ziet, bij de aanschaven. Ja, heel goed. Heel lekker, heel speciaal. Ja. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. The bakery is full of people. Oh, please, go ahead. Maybe that's the rye raisin bread there. <laughs> This family's not waiting. Hello, tastes good? Yeah, absolutely. Heel lekker, heel lekker. Mijn vrouw koopt hier al van vroeger, die wist dat. De eierbroodjes, kaasbroodjes, die zijn heel lekker. I see the daughter finds it quite appealing. <laughs> Goodbye. Enjoy your bread. No matter what the country, people like good food. Hello. I've walked west from Central Station. Now I'm in Antwerp's old town. I've come out into a plaza. There's a tower across the way there. I'd better check my guidebook. That's the Cathedral of Our Lady. The tower is 123 meters high. This statue is of Rubens, the famous Flemish artist of the Baroque period. I didn't know he was from Antwerp. Cafes all around the plaza. What's that? Fried potatoes? What an odd looking sign. Hello. Fried potatoes? How are they? Yeah. It's fried with mayonnaise sauce. That's mayonnaise. And that's very lekker. Really? Mayonnaise on potatoes? Yeah, yeah, always. Always mayonnaise. Echt wel. I see. Toch wel. Ik heb veel van de verschillende soorten frieten, want Belgische frieten zijn echt echt lekker. Ja. Het is apart dan andere landen, eigenlijk vind ik ook. Ik eet constant frieten, ja ook. Yeah. I'm sure that's true. Thanks. Thank you. Imagine that. The best potatoes in the world, right here at a special shop in Belgium. That building on the right seems especially impressive.
There sure are a lot of flags. This plaza has a statue in the middle of it too. It's a fountain. Hey, he's holding a hand. Come to think of it, that woman told me there was a statue of the soldier who cut off the giant's hand. She said it was in front of the city hall. That must be City Hall, there, with all the flags. Ant means hand, and Werben means to throw. Hello, this is Hoboken, a district in Antwerp. About a 20-minute trolley ride from Old Town. I'd like to show you something that's very popular among foreign tourists. This masterpiece depicts the boy Nello and his faithful dog Patrash, who are featured in the novel A Dog of Flanders. The book was not well known in Antwerp. In fact, it wasn't even published here in Belgium. It wasn't until some Japanese tourists started coming to Antwerp to see the setting of the book that we Belgians became familiar with the story. That's when this statue was created. Nello, the hero of the story, lived here in Hoboken with his grandfather. Let's take a look at some of the other places that appear in the book. We've arrived in the old town of Antwerp. Nello came here every day to sell milk. There used to be various markets around the cathedral. The name Milk Market Street, for example, dates to Nello's time. This is the Cathedral of Our Lady. The novel's final scene is set here. Construction of the cathedral began in the 14th century and lasted about 170 years. It's the largest Gothic cathedral in Belgium. It is decorated with four paintings by Rubens. One of them is The Descent from the Cross, a painting that Nello had always wanted to see. It's Christmas Eve, and the 15-year-old Nello's lifelong wish is finally granted. But that very night, he dies. I invite everyone to come to Antwerp to see the city that provides the backdrop to a dog of Flanders. I came from Central Station to Old Town, and then walked north. It's past noon now. That shop clerk just returned some change to her customer. A nice, honest woman. What kind of shop is it? Here's the sign. Ah, it's a sandwich shop. That man took his bicycle into that building. People can go right through it. The building seems quite old. It's like an arcade. It looks like a glass ceiling up there. Excuse me, if I might ask, what is this building? It's actually a formal packhouse of the city. Dus uh, hier werden vroeger uh, alle specialiteiten, alleen het is te zeggen specialiteiten bewaard, zoals koffie, uh, kazen kwamen naar hier, chocolade, omdat dit packhouse een specifieke, uh, allee, constante temperatuur heeft. I see. 
When was it built? Dat zou ik eens eventjes moeten nakijken. Daar kan ik u niet direct een antwoord op geven. Maar ik kan nu wel iemand, uh, een collega van mij, die er wel meer over weet hoor. Of anders moeten we hier binnen. Ik kan ook terecht bij het Felix uh, Stadsarchief. Oh, really? The city still uses it, huh? But tell me, why did they build the storehouses here? Ja, de haven, de oorspronkelijke haven. Het is te zeggen de eerste dokken die nog door Napoleon zijn gegraven. Die vindt u hier aan de overkant. Dus je hebt het Bonaparte dok en het Willem dok, waar nu het museum aan de stroom staat. Dus daarom werd het pakhuis hier ook gezet. Want eigenlijk moet u langs de andere, is eigenlijk de andere kant de officiële ingang. Dus daarom. Thank you. Goed, alsjeblieft. Fijne dag nog. Goodbye. So this was a harbour storehouse. They stored coffee, cheese and even chocolate here. It seems perfect for Belgium. Hmm, what's that on the left wall there? That man was talking about Napoleon. I wonder if it's a cannon or something. No, that's not it. There's a rope attached. I know! I bet it's some kind of pulley machine for hoisting cargo to the upper floors. The harbour that Napoleon built should be out here. Yachts are about all that are moored here now, but back in the day, it must have been full of cargo ships. They unloaded here, and their cargo went to the storehouses. Hmm. According to my guidebook, this is just one part of the port of Antwerp, which is one of the largest ports in the world. I wonder where they all go in their yachts. That red brick building there must be the museum the man was talking about. What's this? It's got a ship's prow attached. Bonaparte Dock. Oh, that must refer to Napoleon. I had no idea he had such a deep connection with Antwerp. I've come from the harbour back toward the station. Tables and chairs line both sides of the street. It looks like some kind of restaurant row, but there aren't many people here. I guess lunchtime is over. Milano, an Italian restaurant, I suppose. And next door, there's Mexico City. I wonder if they have tacos. And then Taj Mahal, which must be Indian cuisine. There sure is a lot of variety. There's Chinese food, too. Ah, and another fried potato salad. This one's called El Rancho. I wonder what country that's from. Hey, that man waved at me. Hello. May I ask you something? I see there are many different kinds of restaurants here. Yeah, here. Ja, alle, verschillend. Ja, met alles, uh, alle soorten uh, restaurants, Italiaans, uh, uh, Argentijn, uh, hier ook in Belgisch, Moselaus. Uh, dus, uh, je vindt het goed, hè? <laughs> Why so many? Waarom? Ja, het is ook hier in het centrum van Antwerpen. Dus normaal uh, hier ook veel kal cultuur, van heel veel mensen in cultuur, uh, verschillende cultuur. En ook uh, toeristen hier altijd komen hier in Antwerpen, heel bekend om dat. <laughs> I bet. Thanks so much for your time. 
it seems that Belgium has a long history as an international society. This restaurant's called Beirut. Mmm, I bet they serve Lebanese food there. <laughs> there it is again, another fried potato shop. People in Antwerp really like their potatoes, with mayonnaise, of course. I'm back in the plaza. There's Central Station on the right, where I arrived this morning. Wow, it's just as fancy on the outside as it is on the inside. Let's see what the stores in front of the station sell. Oh, diamonds! Look at all the jewellers. Here by the station, they're everywhere. to the Diamond Museum. I'm Micheline, the museum's information officer. Antwerp already had a burgeoning diamond industry back in the 15th century. At that time, India was the world's main diamond producer. Most of the Indian diamonds that came to Europe were shipped through Antwerp. Even today, diamonds come to Antwerp from all over the world. 80% of all raw diamond transactions and 50% of all cut diamond transactions are done in Antwerp. One factor that determines a diamond's value is its cut. What you see here is what's called a brilliant cut. Within that type of cut is the Antwerp cut, which is said to be the most beautiful. People who buy their diamonds in Antwerp can get a certificate saying they have the Antwerp cut. It means that their diamond has been cut and polished in the diamond capital of the world. The earrings and necklace you see here were presented to a Belgian noblewoman in 1811 by Marie-Louise, Napoleon's wife. This museum displays diamond brooches and other accessories of rare beauty that have historical significance. The Diamond Museum is just a minute's walk away from Central Station. Please come visit us and see the sparkling history of Antwerp. Those are beautiful bay windows on the right. I returned to Central Station from Napoleon's Harbour. Then I followed the railway track south to reach a residential neighbourhood. It's so quiet here at four in the afternoon. Hello. That's a fine house in front there. It seems to have statues on the roof. Hmm, the street's barricaded. There's a crowd of people down there. I wonder what they're doing. Hello? May I go through here? Thank you.
They've got chairs and tables out in the middle of the street. Is it a flea market? A picture of a horse, stuffed animals, watches. There's quite a variety. Hello. May I ask you something? Yeah. What are you doing here in the middle of the street? Uh, we have straatfeestjes met. Er is een organiserend comité. Een paar van de buren hebben zich verenigd. En uh, wij doen soms activiteiten met de ganse straat. Degenen die dat geïnteresseerd zijn, mogen zich dan inschrijven. En uh, vandaag is er rommelmarkt. En daarna nog barbecue. You're allowed to block the street? Uh, dat moet wel aangevraagd worden bij het, uh, bij het stadsbestuur. Want alle tafels die dat je hier ziet en de stoelen en zo, dat is niet onze eigendom. Dat hebben wij nu hun dag gekregen van, van de stad Antwerpen. Om zo'n beetje het vreemde gevoel in een stad tegen te gaan, dat je elkaar niet kent, dat je zo met elkaar in contact komt. I'm sure they do. Well, thanks for your time. A flea market house. And the city lends them the tables and chairs. That's great. What a cute little girl. Are you painted like a cat? The dog's interested, that's for sure. <laughs> Yes, she's very cute. Bye bye. Excuse me. What's this over here? Hello? Oh, he's giving out soft drinks. The street is everyone's plaza today. It does seem like a great way for folks to get to know each other. People can be so anonymous, especially in a big city. I've come west from the residential neighborhood back to the Sheld River. There's a prow of a boat sticking out from that building. Amazing. Ah, uh, excuse me. Yeah. Could you spare a minute? Yeah. What's that building over there? Uh, that is a house uh, van uh, iemand van de rederij geweest. Uh, van uh, 1800, 1800 ongeveer. Who lives there now? Nu wonen er ook mensen. Onderaan is het een IMO-kantoor en uh, bovenaan uh, is het eigenlijk gewoon appartement. So just regular people live in it. Must be fun. It really stands out. Ja, het is een heel groot huis. Ja, het is een heel groot huis. Dat het een heel mooi huis is. Hè. Het boothuis is hier wel in het Antwerpse heel hard gekend. The ship house, hè? Huh? Well, there's no mistaking that. <laughs> Thank you. Oké, okay, graag gedaan. Dag. Bye bye. That shipping magnet probably made his fortune by transporting goods from all over the world to Antwerp. Then he built himself his ship house. It's like a small symbol of this port town. Hello, and welcome to Antwerp Harbour. I'm your guide, Carl Boots. This port is north of Old Town. Let's go for a harbour cruise. Antwerp Harbour encompasses an area of 140 square kilometers. It's bigger than the city of Paris. 
It'll take us about three hours to see it all. That's an oil refinery over there. More petrochemical companies operate here than anywhere else in the world, except for Houston, Texas in the U.S. The port has four container terminals. Altogether, they handle about 14 million containers each year. You can see the harbor's largest container terminal behind me. It accommodates the world's largest container ships, which are more than 300 meters long. This facility can store as many as 75,000 containers at a time. Antwerp Harbor is Europe's second busiest port in terms of the amount of cargo handled. Oh, it's a huge place. I'm really amazed. Until we took this tour, we had no idea. I live in Antwerp, but I never knew the harbor was so big. This was a fun tour. I'm a school teacher, and I'd like to have my students experience this tour. I bet they would just love to watch the containers being loaded and unloaded in the harbor. There's a canal located on the north side of the harbor, and it connects Antwerp with Europe's largest port, Rotterdam in the Netherlands. I've come west from the residential area and am now walking near the river. I'm about here, I think. It's 5.45 in the afternoon. The square here is a basketball court. I guess school's over for the day. It's very pleasant here under the trees. And he shoots. These little ones are playing too. Hey, where's everybody going? They are gathering in front of that building. Some people are waiting on their bicycles. I wonder what's going on. Hello. Sorry to trouble you, but... <laughs> are you waiting for something? Up the lift. An elevator? That's a lift here beneden ga and then kunt je met de fiets of de voet naar de andere kant van het water. Can anyone use it? Ja ja. Geen probleem. Ah, it opened. Wow, look at all the cyclists. These people came from the other side of the river. They just keep coming. Since I'm here, I might as well try it. Wow! It's big. The display says minus three meters. Oh, we're going down. Excuse me, do you use this elevator often? <laughs> oh. <laughs> do you? Really? Every day? 
uh, naar het werk en terug, dus morgens en s'avonds. Ja. Twice a day, ja. Huh? So you're going home from work now? Nu ga ik naar huis. <laughs> ik woon aan de andere kant van het water, dus ja. I suppose the elevator feels different to you, depending on whether you're going to work or going home, hey? Ja, is beter. <laughs> nee, nee. Ik ben blij dat ik naar mijn kant kan gaan, ja. Beetje rustig. <laughs> well, nice talking with you. Thank you very much. Be careful on your way home. So this tunnel goes under the river. Wow, look how long it is. I guess I'll go back. Ah, oh, there's a picture of the tunnel. It's 572 meters long. It has an escalator too. I think I'll go back this way. Hey, it's made of wood. I bet it's been here for a long time. Hello, sir. You're not using the elevator? No, I didn't ask me. Oh, sorry to hear that. Hello. I guess everyone's on their way home. Well, here I am back at ground level. The space in front of the elevator has more people waiting. I wonder if I can see the other side of the river. Come to think of it, I haven't even seen the Shelled River yet, even though I know the story about the giant. Oh, what a beautiful sunset. So this is the Shelled River. Ah, I can see the far side. I wonder if that woman I talked with in the tunnel has made it home yet. <laughs>